Yes, I am. I'm Michael Widmeyer. I am with the EdPlus data team. I'm a database analyst with them. And I am the lead developer on the EdPlus Data Mart. And I thought it'd be fun to show, share with you guys what we are currently doing to support data validation on our Data Mart. Uh, I am also the main reason why the ultra. You're muted. Michael, you're muted. Oh, I'm going to just start over again, aren't I? We can't hear you. I know. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. I'll try that again. Okay, so I'm Michael Widmeyer. I am the uh, database analyst for the EdPlus data team, and I'm the lead developer on the EdPlus data mart. Uh, we are currently using Postgres user databases for all of our data needs, and we're using Altrix as our main ETL tool. And I thought it'd be fun today to just share with you guys how we do data validation for our data mart. Uh, to start off with, uh, these are some wonderful st usage statistics that I like to share with everybody once a quarter during our annual rollouts. Uh, a year and a half ago, we had we did not have a data mart. We had nothing. We were just doing ad hoc reporting uh, using my, uh, Microsoft uh, uh, using the Microsoft uh, data analytics. And in less than a year and a half, we blew up to over 800 tables currently in Postgres. We're using over 800 gigabytes and we have over 170 Altrix workflows as a team uh, currently in the Altrix gallery. Uh, Kristen Kennedy and I are apparently in competition for the most workflows right now. She, I'm just behind her under with 15 workflows. And as a team, we are the second biggest users of Altrix. Now, in order to do this, in my mind, you need two things to have such massive growth so quickly. Uh, first, you have to have a rapid data validation process to get things through your SDLC. And obviously, you have to have very efficient ETL workflows. So today, I'm going to walk you through the data validation side. And then tomorrow, if you want to come back at the same time, I'm going to walk you through uh, what we do on, a, on the ETL side to keep our, our workflows fast. Uh, real quickly, our Postgres schema, schema is broken up into basically two parts. We have our sandbox development environment, and then we have our production uh, schema as well for our prod deployments. And basically, all of our workflows, that means we have to have two of everything in our system. So the 170 workflows are all production workflows that are scheduled with the gallery. And then on the development side, we have all of our dev uh, workflows in a Git repository, and we run those on an ad hoc basis. Basically, what we do is once a quarter, we take all the development that we've been able to complete. We do an intense uh, regression test across all of the, the data in the data mart, and then we push everything out into production in one big wave. Uh, this allows us to make sure that we don't break any of our existing systems, as well as revalidate, make sure everything that we are currently developing is validated at least once before rollout. So first thing we do, the first tool, I should say, that Altrix has when it comes to helping with your data validation is basically the data profiler. What the data profiler tool does is you take your input data and you pass it into the tool and it does some high level statistical analysis on your data. It produced some very generic responses such as what percentage of your data is null, what is the standard format of the data, what is the longest value, what is your max, what is your min, and then provides some other data points that I find personally less useful, like what is the value of the 25th percentile of your data or the 50th or 175th percentile of your data. Um, if you're going to use the data profiler when working on your data validation, I highly recommend you add a transpose tool afterwards so that it reformats the data 
into a more readable form. It gives it makes it more readable. Otherwise, all of your data gets basically smashed into two columns. The big difference between the data profiler and the browse tool is that you get additional information, such as the max and mins, as well as the, the 25th and 50th percentiles. The biggest downside to the data profiler is it can only run on a sample of your data. So even if you send a million records into the input tool, the max analysis it can do is, I believe, 100,000 records. Um, but it's still good for just a high level overview of what you're doing. Where Alteryx is strongest when it comes to data validation is if you are regression testing your existing tables or comparing your existing data tables. And so what I like to do every quarter is you take your two data sources, your production and your sandbox data, you transpose the data based off of your based off of the, the the individual columns join it together and then get a differential for every single field this is really good when it comes to finding out uh, if any kind of data points uh, formatting changes uh, or any major discrepancies between your two data sets and so in the uh, example i pulled up uh, when we migrated from oracle to redshift one of the redshift data tables, the long description and short descriptions had white spaces in front of them, as opposed to the other the Oracle that did not. This was actually done intentionally by our reports team because it formats better apparently when they push the data into Tableau. Um, this obviously just pulled, this was a really nice, quick, easy way to find those types of issues. The big drawback to doing this is what if you have new records? So what I've just shown you only is going to show you the existing records. It's not going to show you if new terms were added to Redshift that did not exist in Oracle for some reason, or if any new data was created. Um, to do that, we have to get a little bit more creative. We first have to join in the data based off of our primary keys so that we can get those, those uh, new records split out into different browse tools. Then we have to dynamically select the data, then transpose it so we can get our differentials. So it's a few more extra steps, but now we can see any new records that are being created in our data set, as well as the differentials for our existing records. And then at this point, I personally like to add a summary tool because it really helps me narrow it down to where all the biggest problems in data validation are. Uh, so last quarter, we, we basically stopped any new development and focused almost entirely on the Oracle to Redshift migration. And one of the biggest challenges that we ran into was that a lot of the date types in Oracle became date times in Redshift. And so when you're doing a comparison like this, what Alteryx likes to do is it converts everything into a string before it files it does its comparisons. And so right off the bat, all of our dates were coming up as invalid because Redshift had midnight attached to those date times, whereas Oracle did not. And so these are just little formatting issues that we had to look at and then add to our correct in our workflow. And so the summary kind of really points out which columns are causing you the biggest problems. Um, on that note, GPAs too are also a huge uh, challenge to work with because uh, for some reason also they tended to Go, Alteryx intended to interpret them as uh, two decimal places in some cases and three decimal places in another. And so they all came up as errors and we had to review those as well. The other huge downside to this, uh, in addition to the data types, is uh, timestamps, obviously, uh, all come up as errors in this because obviously we're not running everything at the exact same millisecond. And so every single timestamp comes up as an issue. So to try and help address some of these, what we can do at this point is we can do a field definition onto our little workflow here and then do a cross comparison against the data types inside the field definitions in Alteryx. So now we're really starting to figure out what data types are actually changing between our current system and our source system. And so we can go ahead and correct those as well. Now at this point, I think it's a rule that if you find yourself doing something repetitive, you need to streamline it and automate it. And so that's what we did. 
what we created was a data validation macro that takes those two data sets, does the comparisons for us, and returns all five of those different formats that you need. And so every quarter what we do is we take all of the data tables that we know have had some type of change to them or are dependent upon a table that has some type of change. And we run every single one of those tables through the magic eight ball and look at all the results that come back, looking for any types of discrepancies between those, those two tables. Um, since it's an all tricks macro, we just had to create a, a couple of simple configurations where you select the primary keys that you're comparing against. You're selecting the sample size. One of the huge problems we find with Alteryx when you're doing any type of differential comparison is you wind up multiplying the data. So you think about it, the example I was showing a minute ago had 700,000 records per input. So 700,000 rec rec uh, records times 100 columns, and you're well into the tens of millions of data comparisons that you're doing. And so if three or four of those columns have formatting issues, you're going to return millions of errors. This quickly overloaded uh, our BI desktops memory and basically causes all tricks to crash. And so what we do is we limit the amount of differentials we return to a smaller number, just the top 100,000, top 100,000 issues that you have. Then it allows us to look through those differentials and find the most, the biggest problem children. So all of your date times that are formatted incorrectly, uh, decimals that might be formatted incorrectly. Um, when running this against Salesforce, Salesforce, uh, the Salesforce object returns all date timestamps in UTC, but all data in the warehouse is saved in Mountain Standard Time. And so every single date needs to be uh, modified to include an extra seven hours so that we get a proper apples to apples comparison on the data. And so all of that, those types of issues come up and then we sit there and we we add the appropriate formula tool or select tool to correct those problems. Um, we also added a feature where you can select what columns you want to actually do the comparison so we can remove problem children like timestamps, which are constantly being changed, which are never going to match the two systems. And then from there, you can see all the wonderful data that we get uh, sent back. So we have our differential, com our comparison between our data types. Um, I also incorporated the data profiler in here, but you can't see it. So you can actually review the data profiler at the same time that you're running this, looking for any potential anomalies in the sample that it creates. You have your summary, and then you have your actual differentials in the bottom right corner. Um, I actually reformatted this so that it matches uh, what Toad does when it comes to data comparisons, because uh, the format was just much, much, much cleaner. And then, like all projects, it becomes a lot more complex when you actually develop it. So all those, the, the user interface, all of those had to be parameterized, which means additional tools had to be added to the workflow. And this is actually a workflow in uh, a macro inside of a macro. I had to, I had to separate out the two layers as well uh, to make the formatting work right. And so this is basically what we do um, as a team every single quarter when we're doing our data validation. We run this on well over four or five hundred tables every single quarter, looking for any discrepancies before we push out a new update. And that's all I wanted to share with you today. Does anybody have any questions? No questions, just a comment. That's really cool. I tried doing something like that, but I built it by hand. It was messy. Yours is messy, but it's like really effective. <laughs> Mine wasn't effective. Yeah. Does anybody else have any questions? All right. Thank you to our presenter, Michael, and thank you 
to all of us for joining.